Oh, this is Lisa Elvin Staltari. I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. I have the website haveroutswilltravel.com. Also, you're listening to this on my YouTube channel. And I also want to point out to you that this is a brand new series I'm doing. I did Michigan, and now I'm focusing in on Illinois. Each time I do it, I get amazing feedback. So please let me know anything I've missed or corrections or anything like that, or if you just like it. And again, remember to like the video if you do. I really appreciate that. And of course, subscribe if that's something you would like to do. So without further ado, let's get to know Illinois a little bit better. Illinois' history is deeply marked by French influence, beginning with the exploration of the region by French explorers Jacques Marquette and Louis Joliet. In 1673, they charted the Mississippi and Illinois rivers, recognizing the area's strategic and economic potential. The late 17th and early 18th centuries saw the establishment of significant French settlements. These settlements became hubs for trade, for religion and cultural exchange, with missions fostering the spread of Christianity among Native American tribes. The Illinois country was incorporated into the French colony of Louisiana, strengthening administrative and trade ties. French settlers built alliances with indigenous tribes, essential for mutual defense and economic prosperity. Even after the French ceded Illinois to Britain following the 1763 Treaty of Paris, French cultural influences endured. The settlers retained their language, their customs, and their Catholic faith, which continued to shape local governance and society. Today, the remnants of French colonial architecture, place names, and cultural traditions stand as a testament to this enduring legacy. I'm going to turn our attention to Buku, Buku Township and Buku Creek. Now this creek was named by French explorers who tried to cross it when it was very full. Buku in French is the word in English for a lot or a great amount. So it's a lot. And so that is why they called it Buku Creek. It's a major tributary of the Big Muddy River and was important to the early settlement of Perry County, Illinois. As people traveled the Shawnee Town Trail and the St. Louis Trail, they had to cross Buku Creek running north and south between present day towns of Pickneyville and Dequine. So we even have a DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution, that honors the American Revolution patriots. They have chosen Buku Creek as their name, and so they're honoring this very important part of Illinois history. I don't know how the locals pronounce it. I suspect they pronounce it Baku, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below if you know um, exactly how they pronounce it, or do they pronounce it Buku? I'm not sure. Let me know. We turn our attention to the town of Belle Rive, which was founded in 1871 and coincided with the opening of the St. Louis and St. Southeastern Railroad. Belle Rive got its name from Louis Graston de saint ange de Belle Rive. Now that's a mouthful. He was the fellow who surrendered, unfortunately, Illinois to the British in 1765. It's not clear if he was ever associated with the area or the village. Now, Belle Rive is actually means beautiful bank shore. So that is where St. Ange, he is Louis de Gaston of St. Angel of the beautiful bank. And so obviously in his native France, this is probably where he um, was born and the area or the, the property that his family owned. In 1830, a man named Francois Bourbonnet, who was a fur trapper, hunter, and agent of the American Fur Company, first arrived here. Bourbonnet Grove was named after this early pioneer. Two years later, Noel Levasseur and Gordon Hubbard arrived. Levasseur, who was born in the province of Quebec, located his fur trading post at Bourbonnet Grove and became the first permanent non-Native American settler of the area. 
Now, the way they pronounce it today is Bourbonnais. And please let me know if I'm actually pronouncing that correctly. But Bourbonnais is how we would say it in French Canada. Let's talk a little bit about Bureau County, Bureau Creek, and Bureau Junction. Around 1776, a French trader by the name of Pierre de Bureau has established a trading post near the mouth of a creek along the Illinois River. He would eventually become the name for that creek, Big Bureau Creek, a small community nearby Bureau Junction, and after several decades, the county itself. So you can see Bureau is actually a surname in French. We believe that it might have been Bello and that they couldn't pronounce the L and it just became the R, I'm not sure of that. Bureau in French means desk. It's also a very, very classic surname. We come to Cache River. French voyageur gave the river its modern name, calling it Cache, which means secret or hidden place. Obviously, this river was a little bit off the beaten path. And now we come to a very challenging word to say. It looks like it's going to be in Embarrass River and Embarrass Township. Now, in French, Albara means to have um, an obstacle or blockage or a difficulty, and it relates to log jams. So it was originally named because it was a river that had Albara, une rivière d'Albara, and now the locals actually say it, Embra. So Embra River and Embra Township are how it is pronounced. But the actual origin, if you will, of the word comes from the fact that it had blockages to it and it was challenging to navigate. And now we turn our attention to two places. We have Lafayette and Fayette County. Lafayette was named obviously after the Marquis de Lafayette. It's pronounced locally as, as Lafayette, Lafayette. Fayette County was formed in 1821 and obviously this gentleman was absolutely, if anyone doesn't know, the Marquis de Lafayette was a French hero from France who was a tremendous, tremendous asset in the American Revolutionary War, totally a colleague of George Washington, and so many places in America are named for this incredible man who really his second home would have been America. So the fact that so many places, particularly in Illinois, are named for this gentleman is an indication of how important he is and was to the American cause. So let us talk about Fort de Chartres. It was first built in 1720. It was named Fort de Chartres in honor of the region of France from the title of his son, who was the Dewey de Chartres, Chartres being an actual place in France. By 1753, they were on their fourth kind of rebuild of this massive place, and it was a stone fort that became truly the French seat of government and the chief military installation in Upper Louisiana from about 1753 till 1765, when it was then occupied by the British. As you can see, there's an enormous state park here, and it's a, a truly a place I, it's on my bucket list. I did not know about it. Um, it is definitely a place I am visiting. It looks amazing. Now, when I listened to how it's pronounced, I have a feeling that in Illinois, as in other places, they sort of don't pronounce the R-E-S, so it becomes Fort de Chartres, and instead of Chartres. And so that is what I perceived when I was trying to listen to it. Let me know in your comments below if there's another pronunciation. Here's another wonderful fort to visit, Fort Massac and Massac County. Fort Massac was built by the French in 1757 during the French and Indian War and was originally called Fort de l'Ascension. The name was changed in 1759 to honor Claude-Louis d'Espanchal, Marquis de Massac, 
the French naval minister, and Massiac is a French town in the Cantal department. So it's got a very, very French connection. Now, obviously, the way it is pronounced, Massac, uh, it's probably in French, Massiac, but Massac is what I have gleaned is how it's pronounced. And dates back to 1817, when a trading house was built by Bobier, a Frenchman employed by the American Fur Company, a mile north of where the current village resides. Around that time, there was an independent trading post that was built. This was called Prairie de Bru, but the village of Hennepin was named in memory of Father Hennepin, Louis Hennepin, and his early exploration of the Illinois River. Obviously, Joliet is a city that many of you would know. It has a population of about 150,000, and it, it is the third most populous city in Illinois. The history of the town is that in 1673, Louis Joliet, along with Father Jacques Marquette, paddled up the Des Plaines River and camped on a huge earthwork mound a few miles south of the, what is present-day Joliet. That mound eventually got flattened by mining. Now, when they went to name their village, they actually made out the village as Juliette's, which was a corruption kind of of the word Juliette's. But eventually the locals decided, you know what, we needed to honor Mr. Juliette, and they renamed it in 1852. So this is truly, truly, when you look at Juliette and the name, you see the French influence of this man and, and the French influence in Quebec, up New France, into Illinois. And now we turn our attention to Lemoy, Illinois. Lemoy was named after the Lemoy River Valley in Vermont. Legend has it that early French settlers in Lemoy River Valley, Vermont, uh, named the river La Mouette, meaning the seagull. However, a, a cartographer forgot to cross the T's, which led people to begin calling it La Moule. So I've put the kind of the chronology of it. They forgot to cross the T's, and then it became La Moule, and then eventually it became La Moelle. So that's the history of it. In terms of its impact in Illinois, I believe it's because of the people that were coming and settling here and had that background, if you will. And so they simply chose that name because it was something they were familiar with. Now, LaSalle County and LaSalle are extremely well known, as you can imagine. The, it was named for René Robert Cavalier, Sœur de La Salle. Sœur de La Salle is a French title roughly translating uh, to Lord of the Manor. So René Robert Cavalier is actually his name. Sœur de la Salle means Lord of that manor or house or room. La Salle meaning a room or a, a drawing room, if you will. And La Salle, however, was the first European recorded as entering the area. He traveled the Mississippi River from the Gulf of Mexico, claimed the land for France and rather or rather as a possession for King Louis the 14th of France and named it Louisiana. In 1680, he and Henri de Tonti built Fort, Fort Crevecoeur on the Illinois River in present-day Tazewell County. And in 1683, they constructed Fort St. Louis on Starved Rock in present-day LaSalle County. So it's got this rich, rich history of truly being part of the origins of Illinois and how important LaSalle was to the future establishment of Illinois. And now we come to Menard County. It was formed in 1639, and it was named for Pierre Menard, the first lieutenant governor of Illinois, who himself was from New France, Quebec, Montreal, to be precise. So it was that connection, and Menard County is how it is pronounced, but Menard is a very common French last name, and that is how we pronounce it in Quebec land. Next, we come to Prairie du Rocher. 
the Prairie of the Rocks is what it actually means. It's obviously one of the oldest communities in that it still exists in, in today's world. And it was founded as a, as a French settlement in 1722. Think about that, 1722. And it's about four miles from the Forte de Chartres. So it was kind of established as its own unique village. And they kind of share that historic area, if you will. And obviously, it was founded mostly by French colonists, mostly migrants from Canada. They basically do pronounce this area as Prairie du Rocher. From what I've gathered, again, I've gleaned it when I listen to YouTube or that sort of thing. I think they're saying it pretty much, pretty close to how it would normally have been pronounced. There's about 500 people that live there, and the town just celebrated its 300th anniversary. Can you imagine? 300th anniversary in, in 2022. And so we look at St. Anne, which has a very interesting history. Antoine and, um, and Ambroise Alain came from Canada along with a priest named Charles Chenigay, and he had a really interesting history in terms, he wanted St. Anne to be truly a utopian and very free thinking and um, forward progressive community where social justice reigned. It didn't really go that well for him. He was excommunicated by 1856, but his friendship with Abraham Lincoln was part of the history of St. Anne and got St. Anne kind of on the map, if you will. And St. Anne was a very fertile and very unique place. It's a small village now, but it definitely has this really, really interesting story behind it. Obviously, it's pronounced the same way in English as in French. Sometimes it's it's spelled a little differently with the same spelled out. But other than that, we can we can say that St. Anne has remained pretty much the same. And now we come to Toulon. Toulon's history dates back to the mid 19th centuries when it was established as a pivotal settlement in Stark County, Illinois. The city was founded in 1835 by W.W. W. Thompson, a pioneer who saw the potential for creating a thriving community in this very fertile part of Illinois. The city's name was inspired by the French city of Toulon and reflects the European influence on its early settlers. This period marked the beginning of a rich history that would see Toulon grow from a modest settlement to the vibrant community that it is today. It actually was one of, in the early years, Toulon was a crucial stop for travelers and traders moving through the region. And now the way that it's pronounced now is not Toulon. And I, I actually have to write it out and say it's Toulon, Toulon. So two as in too many, and then lawn as in your lawn. And so that is what I understand the pronunciation to be but definitely, definitely a very French focus for this small town. And now we turn our attention to Verger and Verger Township. And once more, we're gonna to have to go back to Vermont. In 1766, Verger, Vermont was established by Donald McIntosh and it became a city in 1788. The city was named for the Frenchman Charles Gravier, Comte de Vergen, who greatly aided the rebels in the American Revolutionary War. Now, Vergen and Vergen townships actually weren't called that before. They were called Mechanisville. And somewhere along the line, they decided they wanted a better name. Possibly there were lots of people coming from that part of the world or from Vermont. Not sure of where that decision tree came from. But certainly by 1836, Vergen Township was formed. Now, as far as that in pronunciation goes, Virgens is how they are pronouncing it. So Virgens, they're really pronouncing the S. And if you have any other contributions or suggestions of how you have heard it, please let me know in the comments below. 
Now we turn to Versailles. Now everyone, not everyone, but many of you have heard of Versailles, France. It was ultimately coming from that area, but we have to go all the way back to Kentucky to find out why was it called Versailles. Well, there was a lady by the name of Louis, Lucinda Casting, who was one of the founders of Versailles, Illinois, and she chose Versailles because her, her hometown in Kentucky was Versailles, and it was founded on in, Ver, in Versailles, Kentucky in 1792, and it, he was the guardian, Marquis Calme, named the town after Versailles, France, in honor, again, of Lafayette, a family friend and hero of the American Revolution. Lafayette was living in Versailles, France, before he came to America. Now, here's a really big difference. In Illinois, they pronounce it Versailles, and that is, but Versailles is how we say it in France. And I don't know how they say it in Kentucky. I'll have to investigate. But as far as I can tell, Versailles is how they're pronouncing it in Illinois. One last one. It's not really, it's not a French name, Chicago. But because of the French influence, one of the reasons that we pronounce Chicago, Chicago, and not Chigo, is because the French have the pronunciation of Chi, Chicago. And that is where it comes from. Because otherwise, Chi, Chai, would have been vastly different. Chicago would have been pronounced differently but for the French influence. So I loved, when I found that out, I had to add it in. Wasn't that fascinating? I just loved the highways and byways of French influences in Illinois. I really feel like I got a handle on it. I hope you do too. Next month, not sure which state I'll be focusing on. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Appreciate that. I already have a big list, but we'll see which one wins out. So until then, I will say au revoir.